How's it going everyone? Sports card fans, wrestling card nuts, and hobby enthusiasts, it's Tom here from Collector Wrestlepalooza. Another week has gone by and you know what that means. Time to open up some more packages. Let's have some fun. Collector Wrestlepalooza. Collector Wrestlepalooza. I'm going to start with a purple envelope and it contains... Aha! Wrestling Card Collector Series, Tom Canesco, Metal Card. This was a great collaborative project. If you are interested in seeing the full set, I do have a flip through video earlier on in my channel. But what this is, is a series of cards of wrestling card collectors. And the person who made the set was uh, nice enough to include Collector Wrestlepalooza, Tom Canesco, in the series. And then once these started being distributed, they sold out within 48 hours, which was a great feather in the cap of the wrestling card community. The metal cards, which were exclusives, there were only two parallel metal cards made per card in the set, people started sending each other their own metal cards. So I was nice enough to do a trade where I received the metal card and the person who sent it to me did not ask for anything in return. I sent him a bowling card set uh, just because I was so happy and thrilled that they were nice enough to send me this card. So here it is. This is the metal card of Collector Wrestlepalooza from the Professional Wrestling Collectors Card Series. Package number two. And it looks like this box contains a number of slabs. Let's see what we have here. We're going to start off with 1982 BBM Bruno San Martino Shaw USA Wrestlers in a near mint seven. I have been picking up these 1982 BBM cards. I have mentioned it previously on my channel. They're quite affordable right now and they're from before the mass production era of cards, which started in 1985, I would say. And this, these actually came from a magazine. BBM stands for Baseball Magazine. There were a lot of cards that you could clip out of BBM Magazine and a lot of them were of professional wrestlers. So this is a hand cut card, I believe, or a perforated card. And this is of the legend Bruno San Martino. It is in a near mint seven. Now, one of the great things about Bruno San Martino was the length of his title reign. If you want to go back in time and find the Hulk Hogan before Hulk Hogan, just look up Bruno San Martino. And one of the great things about wrestling card collecting is as you digest more social media, as you get more into the stories, you start to see the history of the sport. And in the 70s and 80s, before Hulk Hogan and Hulkamania and what the sport is today, there were stars like Bruno San Martino, who were just as legendary, maybe to a smaller audience, but uh, just because professional wrestling may not have been as global as it is today. But regardless, a very, very long title reign, equally as legendary and also a founding father. When people talk about the Mount Rushmore of professional wrestling, I like to think of it in terms of the founding fathers, meaning the real Mount Rushmore is the people that started the country. And the real Mount Rushmore of professional wrestling should be the people that started the sport such that if they weren't around, wrestling would not be what it is today. So you could arguably still put the Hogans and the Flares on it, but you could also think about stars like the Gorgeous Georges and the Killer Kowalskis and the Vern Gagnes and uh, the Luthezes and Bruno Sammartini and people like that from the earlier days of the sport. So this is a 1982 card of a legend, and it's in a Nearman 7, which is a great grade for a card of that era. Speaking of world title reigns from the WWF, Bob Backlund, this one was only in a PSA 5, but even still a 1982 card in a PSA 5. I feel like all the mid-grade cards are essentially the same, you know, 5s through 8s, maybe 5s through 7s, unless you're going to have a 9 or a 10. You know, the difference between a 5, 6, or 7 is not that much, at least aesthetically. Maybe value-wise it is, but I picked it up. It was in a 5, but I still think it's a great grade for a card from 1982 and what more legendary star than Bob Backlund. Bob Backlund was known as a very fit good guy, a, a face. He was known for just being very fit, could run around and, and just had a great physique and was able to go to the gym and that was sort of his persona. And then of course he came back and had an evil heel run as an older fellow in the WWF. Mixed feelings about that, but it just stands to test his longevity and his ability to be a ring performer even later in life. One of the greats, one of the true legends of the 
Sport, Bob Baglin, 1982, BBM Magazine, and a PSA 5. And one of the true greats, Harley Race. There are a few kings in professional wrestling. There's Jerry Lawler, and then there's King Harley Race, one of the first king of the ring, or at least folks in the WWF to wear a crown around the ring. But before he was the king in WWF, he was in the NWA, and he was the heavyweight champ, and he was a tough guy. People know Harley Race as being one of the real early... I don't want to say stiff necessarily, he was a great ring technician, but he could certainly hold his own in a fight. At least that's what the stories were. So you didn't mess with Harley Race. And the legend of Harley Race lives on till today. He was still wrestling. He was in the early WrestleManias in the 1980s. He was a staple in early WWF, but this is from 1982, which would have been probably even before he was in the WWF, more in line with his NWA run, maybe the end of his NWA run. Legendary character in professional wrestling, 1982 BBM, Harley Race. Another legend from the early days, 1982-1983 Terry Funk card. And this is also a BBM card, but it says it's the Puro Rizu magazine. I'm not sure exactly what that means. But if you look at the back of the card, there are some statistics or uh, a chart there. Maybe it's a game piece or something you could fill out with uh, statistics or things of that sort. It looked to be somewhat interactive. So BBM also offered these cards with the attractive colored borders. This one has a nice orange border in line with Terry Funk's coat. This looks like a Japanese, maybe uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling uh, run and I think in fact baseball magazine might have been a Japanese magazine So some of these other cards might be from when these superstars wrestled in Japan as well But Terry Funk is the father of hardcore wrestling early days of ECW would not have been possible without Terry Funk uh, King of the death match his matches with Cactus Jack were legendary uh, And then he also wrestled long 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 after his body would allow him to but was still able to tell a great story in the ring because of his his style and he could brawl with anyone even if he couldn't uh, keep up fitness wise he could still brawl and was just a crazy crazy great uh, heel uh, beloved by fans he was a baby face at certain points of his career but better known as just a wild uh, extreme heel uh, in the 80s and early 90s in professional wrestling so this is a 1982 BBM Terry Funk and the final card here is another card of the Funkster. I just love this age of Terry Funk, 82, 83, just the way he looks in the ring. He isn't bald and sweaty and old yet. He's still somewhat fit, but still a smaller guy because he told his stories more with the heat and with the character than he did with the wrestling moves, even though he was a good ring technician, don't get me wrong, but that wasn't really what he was about. I just love him coming in with a fitness coat here, you know, squaring up the opponent and getting ready to understand what sort of heel maneuver he was going to do upon them. And the back of this card also has that chart, but this one is filled in with numbers. So again, there must have been some sort of a game that BBM was advertising. If you know more about that, please leave a comment. 1982-1983, Terry Funk. And the final box I'm going to be opening up today. This contains a couple of VHS tapes. Let's see what they are. The first one is WrestleMania 5, the Mega Powers Explode. And I'm very pleased to see the condition of this one is much, much nicer than the condition of the other one that I own. Let's make sure this is a vintage copyright. Looks to be the same. Three hour spectacular exclusive footage never before seen. I do love WrestleMania 5. I do think it's one of the most important WWF VHSs to own. I feel like, and I don't have the statistics to prove this, but WrestleManias 1 through 3 and then also WrestleMania 4 were more mass produced than WrestleMania 5 was on VHS. Again, I don't know why I think that outside of the listings I see. I feel like maybe because rental. Uh, stores were more prominent when 1, 2, and 3 were coming out, and by the time 5 and 6 came out, uh, rental stores were not as 
big in the United States. Again, I could be wrong about that, but it's just harder to find these ones, the five. And I also think just the cover is so iconic with two of the greatest and beloved superstars of all time, Hulk Hogan and Macho Man Randy Savage. And again, as I'm opening this one up, this one is in very good condition. The slip cover is pristine. It almost looks untouched. The corners are dinged up, but there's no fading. Very, very happy with it. Let's look at the tape. And the tape itself almost looks like it's never been played. So very, very happy with this purchase, WrestleMania 5 on VHS. And the final VHS in the lot here, again, look at the condition that this tape is in. Hulk Hogan's highlights. I mean, it looks like it's right off the store shelf. Super glossy. This is a 1990 uh, release, and it looks like it's an AWA release. It's produced by the American Wrestling Association, copyright 1990, distributed by Mintex Entertainment in Prior Lake, Minnesota. So very happy with this, just looking at it. Just a great shot of the Hulkster, and more than anything, in very, very good condition. The tape itself, again, looks like it's never been played. So that does it for this week. Those are some of my pickups. Trying to inspire you folks to keep going. I know that we're down in the hobby and it's easy to get depressed and not want to spend time with your products and buy and sell and engage in something where things are losing money, but stick to it. Let's have some fun. We're in this together and we're enjoying it together. Have a great week. Collect the Wrestlepalooza. Collect the Wrestlepalooza.